Okay, here's the thing. I've only got about an hour to get this guitar ready, set up, and I find it has a little bit of sharp frets on this side. Not terrible, but enough that I have to treat it. You can do this pretty fast, believe it or not. No, I don't tape off the fretboard. A lot of people ask me about that. If you've done this enough times, you get to know it and you don't have to. You can feel when you're using this file if you're starting to hit the wood. And then when you sand at the end, it gets rid of any little marks you've made. I use this Stumac file. It's also used for leveling frets, but it works for this. You keep it perpendicular. You don't turn to the side and just go down the side like that. Nice and slow, gentle. You're not pushing down. This is a pretty aggressive file. And it's gonna take a few passes this way. And I can see it's taken off metal just looking at what what it's leaving. And I can feel that in my hand too. It's not yet really going down to wood. Now don't get me wrong, you are going to just slightly graze the wood when you do this. And if you got a problem with that, then don't do it this way. Tape off the fretboard, use a different type of file, find your own way. And then at the end, when I'm getting down to wood, as I am now, I can start to hear a difference and feel a difference. I might do a few passes just at the angle of the bevel. You can also use a bevel file, which I have. I just don't have the time to pull it out right this second. And when I'm in a hurry like this too, uh, I really spend most of my time on the, the, uh, the treble side of the neck, uh, the high E side because that's where your hand passes over the frets the most, right? So that's where you're gonna really feel it if there's a little fret sprout like this. Okay, that's about as far as you need to go. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take that Stumac fret end file. This is a cheap file, it's like 15, 20 bucks. You can do a lot of things with it. <clears throat> and um, this first part you don't have to do, but I usually do, which is just take a couple swipes at it just to make sure there's no more metal hanging over the edge. And then you use the flat side of the file, which is the non-safe side. Uh, the other thing about doing this is you don't need to overdo it. You take a few passes, right? I usually do four like that. I'm at a 45 degree angle to the fret. And what I'm doing with that it's just knocking off the uh, the edge, that really sharp edge of the fret that you feel with your finger. Now you turn it over and you use the, uh, the rounded side, which is a safer side on this file. You don't have to worry about marking the neck when you use this side. And this motion, you're kind of feathering over the edge like that. Again, only, you know, maybe four times and you can even take it a little over the top if you want to try and really get that red and rounded like that and there you go first one's done and then you proceed in an orderly fashion and the more you do this the quicker you can get I can already feel those two are much better than these ones down here. Um, little tiny marks, just you, you won't even see them on camera. There's just little tiny marks that are made and then the next step when I sand, we're gonna clean all that up. Again, the process is taking the flat side of the file, taking a couple swipes that way. When I say flat side, I meant the uh, the uh, grinding side and uh, you're just taking off 
any little metal hanging over the end. Now we take the flat side, put that down, 45 degree angle of the fret, maybe three, four times on each side. That knocks off the, uh, the sharp edge. Now flip the file over to the rounded side, the safer side, and you do this kind of a motion. Again, four or five passes on each side and give it the full treatment. You can try and kind of go over the top a little bit and just get that whole thing rounded off. The most. The other thing is you got to be careful once you get up high up here because you're getting near the body. A lot of people will put a piece of cardboard, tape it off around the body and just be extra careful, especially if a you know, real high dollar guitar next part of the process here is probably one of the most important and there's a lot of different ways you can do it I'll show you a couple fret erasers just run them along the edge there's one fret eraser here's another I can already see the ends of those frets are glowing and rounded and smooth now feeling a lot better okay then we got micro mesh sanders from Stu Mac. Start somewhere in the middle of the grits, you know. These go between 1500 and 12,000. I'd argue, even though you're starting pretty high at 1500 there, it works. You don't need to go with really low grits in this process. Just a few passes with each sanding pad and work your way up through the grits. What we're doing here is really getting the last step that kind of smooths those fret ends out. And at the same time, it's cleaning up any little marks you might have made with the file. Believe me, when you're done and you've sanded well like this, you shouldn't have any any marks left if you've been careful when you're using your file. If you don't want to use WD-40, some people are afraid of using that in their wood. I think it's the best lubricant for sanding, but you can use Windex, you can use water. There's another tool from uh, from Stu Mac you can use it's this it's kind of like an emery board deal and the reason it's nice is because it kind of lets you is real flexible and you can do that on the end of the frets and get um, the edges like that you can go back and forth with it like this and then this last grid on this one's also 12,000 I think this thing's done, man. This is like a 10 minute job. Now again, this is a, uh, this was some fret sprout that wasn't horrible. If you got a really horrible job, you're gonna need to spend more time and really go meticulously and slowly. And you won't be able to go through it that fast. But if you got, if you got some mild fret sprout and you gotta bang it out, and those just look great now. They feel nice and smooth, you know, test it out with your hand, but this is going to be good. Yeah, this guitar is ready to, ready to set up. Just bonus, once you've done uh, your fret ends, you can get it even better with a little uh, fret polish. And really working on those ends, this can be done by hand, of course. Put on your fret polish and use a cloth. I just happen to have this little tiny uh, Dremel, the Dremel 2050. It makes it pretty quick. So really focus on those fret ends and use a good fret polish. I'm using semi chrome polish, just some good stuff. Not only are they smooth, but they are shiny and beautiful.